Welcome back to Next Step Solutions. Today we're going to be configuring SSH access on a Cisco switch and running through some of the basic commands when configuring your switch. This will be a two-part video that leads into configuring VLANs and a Cisco router to demonstrate a simple network with local traffic routing. So let's get started. For this tutorial, I'll be using Packet Tracer to configure the network. Packet Tracer is a free and easy tool for learning and experimenting with different configurations of devices and makes configuring endpoints super simple. First, I'm going to set the host names and IP addresses of my PCs. I'm going to leave the default gateway options blank because I'll be touching on those settings in the next video. Computer A will be set to 192.168.0.1 and Computer B will be set to 192.168.0.2. The subnet mask will leave at 255.255.255.0. Using the copper straight through cable option, I'll connect computer A to port 1 on the switch and computer B to port 2 on the switch. Out of the box, these two computers should be able to communicate with each other using the switch because we set their IP statically and there is no routing currently needed. But this is insecure and I'm not able to manage the switch over the network via SSH. So we need to configure a few things on the switch to allow this to happen. So let's hop into the switch's CLI and configure some basic settings and then configure it for SSH access. When you log into the switch for the first time, you're in user exec mode denoted by the greater than symbol next to the switch name. Using the enable command, we get moved to privilege exec mode denoted by the pound sign. If you want to see a list of available commands for the mode you're in, you can use the question mark symbol to list all applicable commands. You can use short versions of commands as well, and using the show run command, we can see the current running configuration of the switch, which is currently all default settings. To begin configuring the switch, we need to move to configuration mode by using the configure terminal command, or config T for short. Once here, we're going to set our switch's host name and the enable password. We will also use the enable secret command, which uses encryption so the secret password is not in plain text. Let's go ahead and set a message of the day so when someone logs into the switch, a banner is displayed. To do this, we need to use the banner MOTD command followed by a symbol that will not be in our message, so we can set the beginning and the end of the message. Because I'm in config mode, I need to use do before the show command to view the running configuration. Now we can see some of the settings we made in the configuration. Now that some of the simple security settings are set up, let's configure our native VLAN 1 so we can access the switch via SSH. To begin, we'll need to go to the interface mode for VLAN 1 with the command INT VLAN 1. Now we can set the IP address for VLAN 1, making sure we include the subnet mask. We'll label the VLAN with a description and use the no shut command to make sure the interface is in the up state. Using exit, we are brought back to the configuration mode, and we can now specify our domain name, which is required, and the crypto key command to encrypt the data. To allow for SSH version 2, we need to have an RSA size of 768 bits or higher, so let's correct that now by using the command and including 768 at the end. Now it's time to create and assign a user with their permissions and password to access the switch. In configuration mode, we'll use the username command followed by the username you want to use. Next, we'll use the privilege command with 15 to specify the highest level of access and set a password for the user. Now that our user is created, we need to go to the VTY line mode to configure SSH access. We'll go to the line mode and configure SSH for 16 users from 0 to 15 using the command line VTY 0 15 now we will use the transport input SSH command to allow only SSH access. So local users can use SSH, we'll use the login local command and we'll set the SSH version to version 2 with the IP SSH version 2 command and then exit. At this point it's important to mention that you want to constantly save your changes to the startup configuration during the configuration process of a production switch by using the WR space MEE command from privileged exec mode. If the switch reboots, everything from the running configuration will be lost. Now let's take another look at our running configuration. We can see all of the changes that we made are now in the running config. We have everything set up to test our SSH connection, 
So let's use computer A to test. Specifying either the host name or IP address of the switch and using the username for the user we created, we can click connect and as you can see we are brought to the terminal login screen. Using the password we set earlier, we can see we are now at the privilege exec mode of the switch and we see our banner we set earlier. And there we go everyone, we now have a switch with SSH access and two computers that can communicate. In the next video we're going to add a router and VLANs into the mix and add some of the configurations to allow computers in different VLANs to communicate with only the devices that we want them to. So be on the lookout for that one. And as always, guys, thank you for joining me here at Next Step Solutions. If you like the video, please like and subscribe, and I'll catch you guys at the next one.